Hello, welcome back to another episode of Five Things That We Learned. Stephen here after Manchester City's 4-0 victory away uh, against Sevilla last night in the Champions League. It was a wonderful start to City's 2022-23 Champions League campaign. And of course, there is absolutely loads to talk about. So that's what I'm going to do. Five things that I'm going to talk about today. Straight after I say, download one football. Go and click the link in the description right now and get the best football app on the market. I've been using it for over five, six years now or something like that. And it's absolutely fantastic. It does help support my channel. If you want all the information about Manchester City and across the world of football, or your stats and analysis and all that kind of stuff, or your breaking news, what are you waiting for? Go download it right now. Help support my channel. Help support your own football knowledge. It's brilliant. I promise you. Do it right now. Click the link in the description. What are you waiting for? So I feel like I should start this video by saying subscribe as well. <laughs> Nearly 65k, subscribe to the channel. But what I was going to say before I remember to say that was that I feel like I, I should probably make this video a Haaland free zone. Haaland is so predictably brilliant and so incredibly good always every single week that already seven games in after 12 goals, I, I'm running out of things to say about him. There'll be other days we'll talk about him, but he'll broadly get mentioned in this game, in this video anyway, but there won't be a Haaland section because he's just, he's, what more can you say about the freak? You know, he's just freakishly good. Uh, so we'll talk about him further uh, in another day. But I want to start this video with um, the thing at the bottom. Akanji, man. He's ace. <laughs> oh, man. Akanji. Uh, this debut, and then there's that. That guy was born to be a Manchester City player. That guy was born to be a Guardiola player. Seriously. I said last night on Twitter, it's like someone put together an algorithm that would come up with a perfect Pep Guardiola centre-back. Everything about uh, Akanji's game was just perfect. Guardiola X centre back play last night. Of course, it's early on, and we've got to see how he adapts and how he defends in, in tougher tests and uh, very limp uh, severe last night. But you know, you put him into a machine, and this is what comes out. You've got a uh, like Guardiola, what likes you know a tall, elegant, slender centre back, not too strong and weirdly not too tall. Guardiola's all about the vibes and aesthetic, you know. He is. I'm not saying literally, but you know, what I'm getting at. Um, comfortable with both feet as well. He could pass with his left and right. At one point, he was passing so much with his left. I genuinely thought, is he left footed? I was like, I swear he's right footed. But it turns out he is right footed, just very comfortable with both feet. Lovely. I absolutely love it. And also, as well, a good turn of pace. Very good uh, in terms of stepping into midfield as well. Good with the passes, long passes as well. Um, and also a very composed, calm style of leadership to his game. Genuinely, a Guardiola-designed centre-back there for £15 million. So that is an exceptional little signing for Manchester City squad and does so much more for our season than I maybe even realised. Uh, obviously, there was more to test him about, but everything we've seen about him so far looks good. We could have got ourselves a hell of a bargain here, genuinely, because of Kanji, man. Like, that is a Manchester City player if I've ever seen one. That is an impressive debut. Uh, he did everything he needed to do last night and looked more than suitable for this Manchester City City squad. Um, as does Phil Foden, of course. 47 goals now in, uh, for number 47, which is wonderful stuff. Uh, I want to talk about Foden because I think Guardiola talks a bit about Foden. Guardiola alluded to the fact, and he said it publicly, which he doesn't really do, actually. He said that Foden has not really been playing at his very best recently, but what, which is a big thing to do, to point that out. But what he does love about Foden uh, is that every single time he plays, he works really hard and he's dynamic and he gives you something guaranteed, which, is, of course, is a massive credit to the, the young local lad. Uh, but he avoids it was interesting that Guardiola raised that comment about Foden not playing too great recently because I did say in my last five things learned video that I felt Phil Foden had been a little bit dulled recently. The, the shiny superstar had become a little bit muted. Um, he wasn't bad by any stretch of the imagination. He was very five, six out of ten, but he wasn't really tearing things up and he wasn't at his scintillating best. Now, it's good to know that Guardiola <laughs> obviously recognizes these things, which is a, once again another reminder that every single time we get frustrated by something on the football pitch, I said it a thousand times, but I'm going to say it again. Guardiola has already seen it. He's already noticed it, and he's already probably trying to fix it. That is why I don't panic. That is why I don't overreact, because I'm not arrogant enough to presume that I'm seeing things that Guardiola isn't. And I'm also not arrogant enough to presume that Guardiola is too lazy to do anything about it. So every single time I see something like that, um, it's it's good to hear little comments like this from Guardiola, essentially alluding what, what many City fans felt. Like maybe Phil's not at his very best recently. And for Guardiola to point out was interesting. And I guess he pointed out because maybe he felt like he needed needed it to, to hear it but whatever it was the message got through because Foden last night was really good man like a lovely little reverse pass to De Bruyne which of course led to the opening for Haaland's frequency long legs to get on the end of and then of course a beautiful goal as well where he, he shimmied and jinxed uh, through defenders in the area and put it into the bottom corner he was involved in so much uh, Semi got an assist as well when his shot was kind of deflected through to Haaland for his second um, basically for Foden was involved so much more and I still want to see more from Phil man I love Phil I want to see him running at people constantly because I think he's got that 
that to his game. Uh, and he did, we know he's got that to his game. I want to see him come alive though and dribble at people. But that was encouraging last night. The third thing I want to talk about is, are we Champions League ready? Are we ready to win it? I think we are. I mean, it doesn't mean we will do, but look, last night I was watching that game and I was laughing to myself in my slightly tired and ill state, laughing at how much Haaland is everything that we've been missing. <laughs> Haaland, uh, he's in the video, there we go. This is the Haaland bit. But it's a broader point how Haaland essentially is what we've missed in these games where all you've got to do is whipping across and he gets the opening goal because of his big telegraphic legs, you know, like... Um, and he does this time and time again. But Manchester City now, they have that experience in the Champions League. When you've got the experience of Gundogan, De Bruyne, and now Diaz as well as experience, and Rodri's experience, and Bernardo's experience, and Edison's experience, and Walker's experience, Cancelo's experience, they're all super experienced uh, in the Champions League. Now, even Phil's got plenty of know-how in this competition now. And when we've been as close as we have recently in terms of a minute away from another semi-final and then, of course, reaching a final and losing it, um, you can tell that the team know how to get there. And the one thing it's always felt that we lacked, perhaps, was a killer in front of goal. Um, we definitely have the mentality and we don't have the fear anymore to go far in this competition. We have the self-belief. We have the tired kind of like acceptance of this competition, if that makes sense. We've been worn down by it so much that I don't think it phases anymore. There's only so many times you can be hurt by something before it starts, but eventually you're just numb to it. And in that instance, that's a good good thing I don't think that the fear of failure actually hurts Man City anymore I think they play with a relative freedom in this competition because we've seen it all and it is what it is and it is football and it's a freedom that comes from a lack of fear sometimes and I think that that's where City are now and when you add the experience once again and the brilliance of someone like Haaland and Alvarez coming into this side um, I think we're ready potentially to win it I think we are. I don't think I've ever seen a Manchester City squad more ready than this one right now and that's very exciting for me doesn't mean we will of course but it's very encouraging I want to talk about a little cameo for the Yorkshire Perlow, man. Like, I know Calvin Phillips was not the story of this game at all. But for me, it really stood out when he came onto the pitch. Um, how alive and how alert and how different he looked, actually, to, to Rodri. And I mean that in a very good way because there's no point having a Rodri clone there. I mean, that'd be nice, let's be honest. But as someone who does something a little bit different in that DM position is definitely welcomed. And what I really liked about watching Calvin Phillips when he came on last night, last night was, one, his fitness looked really good. But two, um, that range of passing is exceptional, man. There's a reason they called him the Yorkshire Perlow over at Leeds, I guess. And it wasn't just because he could pass a bit. It's because he could pass very, very well. I mean, the range last night when he was pinging diagonals left, right and centre. I think he attempted... I mean, he completed all of his passes last night, by the way. Like, all of his passes when he came on the pitch, including five long diagonal balls straight to the feet of our forwards, which is incredibly impressive. And it's another tool for our arsenal, basically. Another weapon, um, which is not really what our rivals wanted to see. But it is that, you know. You've got to bear in mind, while at uh, Leeds, Calvin Phillips did an awful lot of firefighting there. His role was essentially to show up that back line, you know, and uh, intercept, you know, in midfield and kind of break up play a lot. So he didn't really get to show the full breadth of his attacking brilliance in terms of his passing range and all that kind of stuff. So that's what you'll get a lot more from Manchester City. So I'm fascinated to see what Phil Phillips looks like on the ball as a Manchester City player. And last night was a very interesting example of what the future could hold for the Yorkshire Perlo under Guardiola. Um, the final thing I want to talk about is Jack Grealish, actually. No, Jack Grealish will continue to divide Manchester City fans. I don't really see why. I mean, I don't see the point in getting down on one player personally. Because once again, you look, as I said earlier, if Guardiola, if we've noticed it, Guardiola's noticed it. But Guardiola was very, very praiseworthy of Jack Grealish. He said he's come back in a great, he said something slightly clumsy. I can't remember he said, like a great moment or great action or something like that. He said it in a slightly wordy way. But the underlying message is that he feels like Jack Grealish has started this season really well until his injury. And I actually agree with that. I think Jack Grealish is running at people a little bit more. Weirdly, last night, he ran at people quite a few times but did nothing with the ball when he did get past people. But it's the kind of things fans love to see. They love to see you running at someone even if nothing comes from it. Which, of course, is not always a good thing. You need to find the middle ground and you need to be productive and so on. But I actually broadly agree with this, man. Like, I do want to see Jack Grealish uh, run, run at people. And I do agree that Guardiola is right to point out um, that Grealish's form has been good. I think he looked very disappointed when he came off last night. And to be honest, I like that. I liked seeing Jack Grealish furious that he came off after 60 minutes because he did look it. Jack Grealish is a, a very happy-go-lucky guy who never looks like the world's bothered him at all, man. He looks totally at home at all times and, like, he always looks really happy. But last night, I saw him look frustrated when he came off and that was because I think he knew he was playing well. 
and how hard it is to get into the team and that he has to do more and get those goals and assists because unfortunately that is how the world judges him whether that's fair or not that's just a matter of how it is and um, I thought his actions last night and his energy and his running at people and his mentality when he came up was a really really positive sign and look Jack if he's up for it and he's on his best game he's a very 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 good footballer fingers crossed that we see more of that Jack Grealish and I'm sure we will uh, they are five things that I took from it there was loads of talking points so I've not talked about Gomez by the way like Gomez I'll do a quick little kind of like bonus point here Gomez I thought was really comfortable on a Man City shirt really comfortable like totally at home and I really like that and I love seeing Alvarez get on as well and be instantly really aggressive and I love seeing Cole Palmer get on the pitch again a perfect night last night by the way genuinely new players playing and another goals uh, goal for Foden and Alvarez sorry Erling and so on um, it was lovely stuff and I really thoroughly enjoyed it and big Ruben getting a goal as well at the end lovely lovely stuff indeed anyway let me know down in the comments what you took from the game the five things that you learned thank you once again to the Patreons these guys are wonderful as are my YouTube members as are you by the way you know but these guys of course so I want to give him a big shout out because all these names here, look, you know, this is my full time job and you help keep the channel going. So thank you very, very much. It's really appreciated. If you want to help, patreon.com forward slash esteem company. Uh, if not, don't worry about it. Just keep liking these videos, subscribe to the channel if you're new, keep commenting down below. It all helps the channel. For now, though, have a wonderful day. Up the blues.